It's coming down to the mid lane, gentlemen. Epic clashes in that lane. 이번 대회에서 잘하는 미드 라이너는 페이커 선수, 이지훈 선수, 비오스 선수. everyone has one name on their mind of course it's always going to be faker i would like to play against faker faker i really want to play against faker daldrin just on the other side and it's going to be as well dumbledore's from the top lane the hits go in but sheik does kills faker it's only set on the base he had a playmaker this is the cost of sending four people mid to kill faker on his birthday Trying to put pressure on the flash into the urchin strike as well. There's the fish down and oh. Oh, with the solo kill me. I really like how this guy played fish. 我最想遇到的中路是胖,因为上一次在世界赛的时候打败我们HQ,希望这次能再挑战他. 네, 저는 프로 하면서 근데 사실 외국 미드라이너 선수들이랑 붙는 건 이번 기회가 거의 처음이기 때문에 어, 직접 해보기 전에는 잘 어떻게 아니, 잘 모르겠어요. 직접 붙어보기 전까지. Look at the equalizer in the backside though. On top of the hemo plague as well. This is what this comp's supposed to do. Triple kill for Easy Hoon. 다른 해외 팀의 수준이 많이 올라왔다 보니까 좀 예전처럼 그렇게 쉽게 이기는 힘들 것 같고 저희가. Welcome everyone to day two of the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational, coming to you from Seminole Country on the campus of Florida State University in Tallahassee. Yesterday we saw some of the most anticipated international matchups of the year, and today promises to deliver just as many thrills. Now the action is ramping up. As you can see here, the crowd hyped as ever. Lots of flashy lights. Uh, gentlemen, Thank you for joining me here today. I'm James Dash Patterson. We're excited to see the group stages here. And alongside me, we have some of the finest minds in League of Legends from around the world. The OCE's Jake Spawn Tiberi, English language caster for the LPL. We have the coach of the European LCS's Unicorns of Love, Fabian Sheepy Milant, a familiar face from the North American LCS, Alberto Crumbs Renghifo, and a mainstay of this very analyst desk, Aiden Zyrene Moon. Guys, there's a lot on the line here. Welcome back. Hope you're rested and ready for some kick-ass international play. Now, yesterday was full of surprises, sure, but SKT still remains at the top of the table. But look who's right behind them in second. We have AHQ. These guys go into every international tournament as being heavily underrated, and they always perform. And the trend in them is that they get better as the tournament goes on. So I think that will continue. And Westor, you know, we, we thought, oh, he's always having a CS differential. He's getting solo kills on Favivin that last Viz game every single time, and he's still the pinnacle of the team. Even if the focus is on the bottom lane, he's still the one that applies the pressure on mid lane chokes up the other mid lane so that he opens up plays on the map. And the top lane and bottom lane for AHQ have really surpassed my expectations. And a disappointing story from day one, TSM getting crushed by Fnatic. Oh man, TSM coming into this, like they thought this was their tournament. They're like, all right, this is our time to like show that I am Katowice meant something in relation to this in Worlds. They come in with like this high expectation of themselves and they're not meeting it and they're really disappointing themselves in, in here. So recovering from that, huge it was actually really like a crushing victory from Fnatic and SKT like TSM did not look like the TSM that we were seeing their picks were all over the place their strategy and their pressure was just pretty much non-existent so they need to step up today really hard yeah catching up on this it was more like the TSM from IEM San Jose Santorin being like yeah. really really passive and you should really look forward to how do they adjust I think the biggest point will be the mentality and they said on social media they are ready they want to 2-0 today and I feel that if they have the mentality right and actually play to their best, they can easily do that. It's much easier said than done, too, because when yeah. you come from just high expectations of yourself, they're all talking about a top two finish, and you crash and, they and you're say like struggling for a fourth Well, we talk spot. about TSM coming in with confidence today, which is what they need to do, and the TSM fans are ready for a comeback. You saw there just a second some clips of them chanting, rooting for USA. There it is right there. A lot of pride on the line here for that team as they have lofty expectations. Then, of course, 
Uh, looks like we have uh, Fnatic or EDG. This is EDG rather instead of uh, Fnatic here. Now we go over to Fnatic. <laughs> we're going all over the place, gentlemen. And we're back at the desk. <laughs> at, the end, <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> there are a lot of players getting ready for a lot of games. Uh, moving on with half of the group stage behind us, though, here's where we're at coming into day two. Korea's SK Telecom T1 is alone and undefeated at the top of the standings. AHQ Esports is in second at two and one, while Edward Gaming and Fnatic are tied at third with one win and one loss apiece and throughout yesterday's games you were calling out the amazing moments on Twitter and here are your MSI big plays the first one comes from at Chira Jaden who says looks like Faker got his birthday spanking <laughs> <laughs> they're going for a little bit of Whoa. mid lane looks like Thakalis and Thaldrin just on the other side and it's going to be as well Dumbledore's from the top lane who is the monster of the mid lane now <laughs> <laughs> look at me I'm the monster now I wasn't sure who's expecting four people mid Two and a half minutes in. I remember when I got my own birthday spanked. <laughs> no, I, I, I did watch Dig during the beginning of the season. Oh, <laughs> that was around my birthday. <laughs> uh, all right, our next one comes from SKT versus TSM. At Lucas M writes, oh my God, denied. SKT Wolf saying, don't, uh, don't mess with the horns. He's going to find Santorin right before the Dragon Pit. Looks like he's going to try to get over the wall. Not going to work, though. Oh, Chilling Smite Santorin in a lot of trouble here. Lost one. Oh! Denied! Headbutting it back out of the Lantern. He is one of them spotting Santorin. That's why those know they can take this fight. And look at Wolf. Lantern for Santorin just headbutts him back in. You're not going anywhere. I love how Monty's yeah. like, well, hold on, hold on. Uh, gravity, uh, gravity. Keep myself centered here. <laughs> that's, so, that's lovely. Yeah, Got to lower that center of gravity so he doesn't fall <laughs> over. I mean, that was pretty much like the amalgamation of the TS. Like, that was the story yesterday of that game well, for them. Say, Nothing Torrin would go right. that entire time, too. Yeah. So it's not like I'm going to flash, then body slam over the wall. He didn't risk it. He was like, okay, let's not blow anything. Let's not, like embarrass myself but then that's what happens is you embarrass yourself <laughs> when you don't go for the play that you normally would have gone for and last boy just can't save him quick enough he's trying to run everywhere and pull everyone out of danger he just can't do enough for his team yeah, yeah thresh thresh lanterns all over the place all more day fresh lanterns than actually hooks in this game <laughs> probably maxing it all right too, well <laughs> remember to keep sending those in those show stopping moments send them at lol esports as they happen and be sure to include the hashtag msi big place now there's sure to be plenty of big plays today as we start things off between the lpl's and Edward Gaming and the European LCS's Fnatic. Then North America's Team Solo Mid will face off against the LMS's AHQ Esports Club. Edward Gaming will take to the rift again to face International Wildcards Besiktas Esports Club before Season 3 World Champions SKT Telecom T1 square off against the Season 1 Champions Fnatic. Each team will have played a total of five games at the end of the day unless it comes down to tiebreakers to determine seeding for tomorrow's bracket. And while the games are taking place in Tallahassee, we want to see how you're celebrating the 2015 Midseason Invitational around the world. So get on Twitter and tell us, how do you MSI? Send photos and tell us how you and your friends are enjoying MSI so we can share them in the broadcast. Here's a little inspiration for you. This is how we MSI here at the Analyst Desk. It's a lot of fun. A lot goes on when the cameras are not. <laughs> right, anyway, remember to tweet those to us at Lull Esports and be sure to use the hashtag HowIMSI. And we're still looking for our first Baron Steel or Pentakill of the tournament. So keep an eye out. When that happens, it will trigger bonus legendary and esports mystery gifting in the store throughout or through May 15th, rather. And while our broadcast team is be, uh, bringing MSI to you from Florida, our international partners are hard at work covering the show for the far corners of the globe and in multiple languages. On the ground in Tallahassee, here's Caster Jun and Dong Jun Kim. Cloud Templar and Chobra for on game net from Korea's LCK. Joker, Chang Mao, and Xiao Xiao. And the League of Legends Pro League broadcasting today's matches in the audience. Those were flipped backwards, actually, ladies and gentlemen, for the audiences in China. <laughs> Anyway, and of course we have our own casters, Rivington Bizzle the third, Max Atlas Anderson, and Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler, who will be bringing the play-by-play -play for today's first three matches. Meanwhile, Efya Shox de Portia is standing by in the interview area, getting the insider insight all day long from the pros. And now for a match between uh, two franchises that are no stranger to the world stage, both Edward Gaming and Fnatic are back after overhauling their rosters for the 2015 season. Both teams are one and one and have three games to play today. Yeah, and heading into this match, I think that we can expect a lot of fighting. I feel like Fnatic is more like this bizarro ED, uh, EDG, who are also going for fights, tower dives, and a lot of early aggression, and sometimes with more and less success. And I think we should also like take a look at the top laners who are very dominant for their teams. 
Yeah, it also looks like EDG. This is a playstyle that they can handle. They're the best equipped to deal with the fight heavy meta. We were talking about Fnatic and EDG. EDG is just, to me, a better version of Fnatic. Coming out there, they're very controlled around their skirmishes. Their team fight coordination is second to none, I still don't think. I think in the controlled matchups, they're going to struggle. But when it comes to fight heavy meta, these are the guys. Coming into the game, you know, we were watching Fnatic's review, watching the games, and we're thinking, okay, these guys are pretty good. Then we see their first game against TSM, it's like, wow, these guys can bring it. Like, they just crushed CSM. Maybe they can go 2-0 two two in the day. Next game, they pretty much get blown out of the water by AHQ. It's like, okay, that's a little disappointing. Then we're watching EDG first game. It's like, wow, that's crazy. They played exactly what we expected. Amazing. That's just their style. Maybe they can hold up to SKT. What happens? Faker falls asleep, doesn't even watch the match. It's that one-sided. So <laughs> these teams are hungry, you know. They both went 1-1 with very bipolar performances. So they really want to show to the fans, like, yeah, this is why you're cheering for us. We're actually really good. I think both these teams will step up, and it's going to be a really high-octane matchup. Yeah, and I think a lot of this relies on the top lane. The games that they're winning, the top lane is just going off. Koro and Huni. Whoever gets the advantage there in that top lane is really going to tilt just the entire map. They're both really good at TP plays. They're both really good at snow snowballing their advantage into other lanes. And that's really scary because they all play Terry, carry top laners and they do a large portion of their team's damage. I feel like, especially Huni, who has the highest person DPS from all top laners around the regions. The um, world. The world. And I think this is something that is just showing how Fnatic is operating. Yellowstar having the most wards placed and Huni having the highest DPS. I think this team is so reliant on top lane where I think EDG might not be, yep. but I think also they are just executing it better than EDG. Yeah, I think the other thing is Huni does rely on Rainover to get him going. Once he is going, Huni is a solo carry by himself. We mentioned his damage, the ability to dive the back line. Huni doesn't do as much damage to the front line. He's all about getting onto the priority targets, but he does need to get going. Coral, on the other hand, is all around his teleport. So whilst they throw attention to Huni's land, I expect Coral to be able to get more done by himself and create play off clear love around the map. Clear love's much more about teaming up with Mako, creating spaces where they can teleport behind plays and get uh, clear love uh, Coral in on the back line. I think it's worth noting that we mentioned about how Huni having the highest percentage damage and Yellowstar with a lot of warding. Well, it could just be that Yellowstar's warding is simply the enabler for Huni to get that extra damage. Yeah, if, you, if you get more TPs, you get, you know, get more fights more often. And I think that could be the contributing thing. So it may not just be that Huni is a monster when, when he gets going, which he is, but it's also a whole collaborate team effort to make sure he gets to that point. Well, that's the thing. Top laners in general in this tournament are performing extremely well. Three of the six teams, their top laners are the highest percent damage on their team so far this tournament. So interestingly enough, you know, in a, in, where we had originally talked about the importance of mid laners and this being the tournament, the battle of the mid laners and how they can affect the teams, it, it looks like it's trending maybe towards the top lane and TP play. And this is really scary for people who are playing tanky top laners because there's top laners who are going to try to roll over you in lane. They're mechanically skilled and they're good at turret dives with their team. We're seeing a lot of turret dives this tournament, and the team that's able to pull them off and execute them very cleanly seems to be coming out on top in early game. And I feel really that EDG is not the better version than of Fnatic. I really disagree there. I think that EDG is really good in some skirmish situations, better maybe than Fnatic, but I think that in the flanking, Fnatic just shows that all the engages are absolutely You're going to have great. the... You're gonna have <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I do not think that you can say anyone... Like, Koro's Hecarim yesterday was the flanking play that was coming through. There was, The Callista may as well have not existed on the map past the 25-minute mark. Like when everyone was in the team fight, it was just gone. Who needs engages were really crisp. I think just Fnatic as a team didn't back it up. Oh, you saw it in, like, I don't think he's better the than Koro at Trying though. to get kills and objectives. Well, we saw plenty of these skirmish-heavy teams so far. The... Uh, there's a lot of, you know, fight play at MSI. And according to Edward Gaming's Clear Love, that's exactly where his team excels. Okay. All right, no, they don't feel like they have any communication issues. And I have to say, after watching yesterday, it didn't seem like that either. I'd like to be able to catch a glimpse of just a little excerpt of them team fighting when you can hear the comms and see what they're really talking about, have somebody translate so you, 
the whole world can learn about it. If their com communication is that good, you know, maybe you can take some notes out of that. Yeah, and it's funny because we don't know how the communication works, but we saw when they turned on the dime on the Sejuani ult yesterday, it definitely does work. Oh, yeah, However, that was good, really impressive. TP was already there. coming in too, it was great. All right, well, I'm sure people are excited to get into some of that action today. Now let's take a look at the lineups we'll see on stage today. On the blue side, it's the LPL's Edward Gaming. In the top lane, we have Koro. In the jungle, Clear Love. Pawn in the mid lane, Deft at 80 Siri, at 80, 80 carry, and Mako at support. And of course, over on the red side of the rift, it's the European LCS's Fnatic. Huni in the top lane, Rain over in the jungle, Fabiven in the mid lane, Steel back at 80 carry, and Yellow Star, Yellow Star on support. Wow, words are escaping me today. But before we send it over to the stadium for the picks and bands. Gentlemen, I want to hit you up for your predictions of this match. Spawn, we're starting with you, as always. So I went 0-3 yesterday. It wasn't a great day, but I think EDG have this one. This is one of the ones that if I was a gambling man, I would put a lot of money on. I think that they are better in a lot of the roles and play a similar style. If you were a gambling man yesterday, you would be really poor. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd, be you'd, have no, like, you'd have no money left yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> So, feeling that you go with EDG and you're really certain on this, I feel more, you know, going for Fnatic here and I think they will have a really strong showing and show that Europe is not to miss. I think you go with Fnatic because every time they win a game, you're just like, yes, we could have been here doing the yeah. same thing. <laughs> well, we're not that well, bad. <laughs> it was a close match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with EDG, you know, I think that the difference in both losses from the teams is vastly different and one is easier to fix. EDG, you could argue the draft was really poor. Sure, their play was lackluster, but I think it came down to how poorly they drafted. On the other hand, Fnatic versus AHQ, they got played pretty hard, to be honest. Solo kills in the mid lane, bottom lane losing, top lane just barely going even. I think EDG, if they bring their A game this time around versus Fnatic's uh, A game as well, I think EDG will come out on top. But if Fnatic does the same thing <laughs> that they did against TSM, you can't root I'm, two I'm, teams. I'm not rooting. I'm not rooting. I'm giving the condition. They no, can no, win. no, 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 if they no, get no. the laning phase, they got it. They can win the laning phase. Yeah, if I had two picks every single time <laughs> yeah, I put a prediction in, I'd be 3 0 as well. <laughs> the the anyway, caveat. What's the system, man? <laughs> Even though I hate going with the curse of spawn, I gotta go with EDG here. I think that right now they're the superior team. They just need to clean up their picks and bands. Their coach in an interview said that they're trying things out. If they keep trying things out though, We'll see, because it's really risky, because it didn't work against SKT, especially I, the Tristana. They but we had this picture up. before. I was for one team, Fnatic, and you were for all the other teams. So I yeah. guess yeah. Right. That's, that's how the day started yourself. yesterday. So this could be an omen of things to come. Yeah. And just on your point about trying things out, EDG tried stuff out all season long. The LPL is a very long season. We saw a Fizz Eve comp come out from these guys, and they still managed to get the win. The Tristana, I think, was a bit that fell over. I don't even know whether that's trying things out. I think that was just like a panic click coming through there but overall I still have a lot of confidence in EDG. We'll yeah. have to see if EDG after dropping a game yesterday decide to stop trying things <laughs> out. According to LolEsports.com 54% of you have actually picked Fnatic to take this game so Sheepy's got a little bit of backing there. I got the there. fans on my side yeah. and they know it as well. <laughs> All right well the teams are ready to kick off the second day of the 2015 mid-season invitational so let's step inside the caster booth and get into the game. Thank you very much, Dash. I am Rivington Bizen the third, and joining me is Oceanus, Max, Atlas, Anderson, and of course Sam, Kobe, Hawk, and Kensler. As the team's ready up for picks and bands to start day two of the midseason invitational, gentlemen, it's going to be great. They were discussing on the desk who has the edge. I mean, if you give EDG a vowel, they are the edge. But seriously, the freak's not up here. Uh, these teams are <laughs> one and one. We got a pretty even game going into this one. Hopefully, Fnatic can shake off what happened yesterday. And they're going to start off with an Anivia ban as well. So interesting stuff coming through <laughs> from EDG, the word go. Yeah, very bold move here. It looks like they're going to try and cut down on the number of bans for the top lane and the AD carry role. Uh, we'll, they've been talking up this Huni versus Koro matchup because it really has come down to sort of the three kings of the top lane here at yeah. MSI. And that is Koro, Huni, uh, and of course, Marin uh, for SKT. Looks like we had a little bit of a bug. They're going to hop out real quick and get Champion Select restarted. We did see that Anivia ban. You're talking about the top lane and throughout the season. <laughs> this bird, not then a bug. <laughs> yeah. Th throughout the top lane, we've been seeing less Maokai. Was played a little bit yesterday, but these guys are definitely going for that mo more top carry focus. Something where they can just get back in the game and help the team out and not be on an island. Yeah, so much Hecarim, Gnar, Rumble, all of these really big playmaking 
high teleport impact mm. champions. This has and a lot to do with these champ these players though as well, because these are the Hecarim players. This is Koro and Huni. These guys love playing this champion. It's not necessarily a Maokai style. I feel like if they go back to Maokai, it's sort of like them conceding their power picks here. I think it is um, yep. going to be very important, especially since it feeds right into Fnatic's playstyle and how